difference. So I'm kind of skipping all of the basic definitions, and I'm also presenting my experimental results only briefly so that we have time to look at the more recent results um, in more depth. And, but, but, but feel free to ask any questions about any keywords, any concept that is interesting for you, and I'd, I'd be happy to answer those questions, preferably toward the end of the presentation. So a little bit about my background. I completed my master's degree here at Villanova University in 2014, and I worked on this NSF-funded project where we designed different types of microfluidic devices, and here is a, a video of the tip of the device where it creates all of these emulsions, and um, using a high-speed camera and, and a cryo stage, we, we can extract data about ice nucleation and crystallizations in these micro droplets. Before that, I worked in different industries, including lubricant industry, steel industry, and home appliances industry for a couple of years. And before that, I served in the military for two years. And prior to that, I completed my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering in 2006. For PhD, I had the opportunity of joining the research group of Dr. Santana. And I worked on this project that was partly funded by NASA. And uh, we completed that project in collaboration with Advanced Ceramics Manufacturing, ACM, in Arizona, which is also the company that Dr. Wing, one of my committee members, is affiliated with. By the way, Dr. Wing, can you hear me well? Yes. All right, great. So we designed uh, different types of composites that have a kind of a, a matrix alumina, um, alumina-based matrix, and they have different volume fractions of these three groups of inclusions that are zirconia bubbles, zirconia particles, and silicon carbide particles. Um, so the, th the three types of composites are called castable zirconia, castable silicon carbide, and castable silicon carbide zirconia, or for short, CZ, CS, and CSZ, where Z stands for zirconia and S stands for silicon carbide. Placement. Uh, microcrack initiation, in the, uh, mostly in the matrix, uh, microcrack propagation and shrinkage, and finally matrix loss, which can be due to uh, release of crystalline water or um, micro, micro scale ablation. So that's all I wanted to say about the experimental part of my work. Um, it's time to create finite element simulations of these microstructures and investigate their micromechanics in, in more detail. So this slide is meant to give you a general picture of how this part of the research works out. We we'll start by creating these um, RVEs, representative volume elements of the three composite types, and apply different types of boundary conditions on them. And uh, measurement is performed uh, to find elastic modulus, shear modulus, thermal conductivity, and CTE. And once we have all the results, we perform some statistical analysis on them uh, for different purposes. And then we compare the results to experimental findings as well as predictions of different schemes. So how are these um, RVs created? We use something called RSA algorithm, random sequential adsorption algorithm. And this is how it works in a nutshell. If we can imagine these nine adjacent squares on the plane, and if we take the one in the middle as the RVE, we can start by adding one inclusion to the RVE. And we can assume uh, sister particles in the adjacent squares. Now, if we add another non-overlapping inclusion, even if it crosses the walls, we should also assume those adjacent, uh, uh, those sister inclusions, and only the ones that are in contact with the RV will be plotted. And if we cut around RV at, at this yellow dash line, then we are left with this, uh, mic this periodic uh, microstructure of the RV. So the, the way that we implement the RSA algorithm is by using um, Python programming in conjunction with Simulia Abacus. And here's one example of a realization of CSZ composite. So we we'll start by creating silicon carbide inclusions. And then we the thinking behind um, how these uh, 3D samples must be created is very similar to 2D simulations, but the commands are very different, technically speaking. Therefore. Uh, you know, a whole new set of codes had to be uh, developed for these uh, 3D simulations. So, again, for one sample of CSZ, we can start by creating these zirconia inclusions and then zirconia 
I'm sorry, silicon carbide inclusions and then zirconia bubbles and then zirconia particles and then the matrix. And once we put them all together, we get this 3D um, um, RVE. Now notice that we have up to three groups of inclusions which have different material properties, different inner to outer diameter ratio, and the volume fraction goes higher than 70%, and all of those properties put together actually provide us with simulation uh, capabilities that are currently at the top line of the uh, literature. Um, we encountered different difficulties in creating these simulations and running uh, analyses, and in the following slides, I'm going to explain some of them for you really briefly. So one problem is achieving high volume fractions. And the RSA algorithm just doesn't go past 50, 60%. So we had to modify RSA algorithm and come up with a new algorithm, which we call it modified RSA, uh, ironically. So um, here's the way that it works. For, for a given input, uh, RSA algorithm reaches that volume fraction with more, uh, after creating more than 100 inclusions, whereas modified RSA reaches the same volume fraction with much a smaller number of inclusions once the outer diameter is maximized. Here's connecting uh, inclusions to the matrix, and because we have all of these random shapes at the, edge of, at the edges of the um, RVE, it's very difficult to do it manually uh, using the GUI. So we, we develop another Python code that automatically selects all of the inner surfaces of the matrix and all of the outer surfaces of the inclusion and applies a tie constraint between the two. So arguably the most difficult part is applying the periodic boundary condition. And uh, in theory, if that's the RV right in the middle, we can define top, right, and front dummy nodes. And then all of the nodes on the edges should be connected to the dummy nodes using these sets of equations. Uh, pretty much similar to uh, to the simulations. But uh, the issue here is that the, the mesh on the opposite edges won't be identical, so it, it actually won't be an effective technique to apply periodic boundary condition. And um, this is really a problem that currently researchers are working on it. Uh, we attribute these values to the matrix uh, in, in these uh, composites because we make the assumption that all of the failures and cracking and all of uh, those uh, phenomena take place in the matrix. So again, we we'll start by creating these uh, microstructures for the three types of composites. But the time, and what we see is that matrix is, ex is experiencing a mix of uh, compressive and tensile stresses, although uh, tensile stresses are more dominant and at larger values. Um, we can look at the uh, co uh, contour of the uh, plastic uh, plastic strains and see how they form around the inclusions and between them and sometimes they grow into the matrix as well. So uh, the, the contour here can tell us which elements have experienced the largest deformation um, throughout the time. And um, using some uh, post-processing Python codes, we can extract information about the percentage of yielded elements in each frame of these uh, simulations. And if we plot the percentage of yielded elements versus temperature, um, we can get these graphs, um, which are more similar to one another for each composite type and more different uh, between different composite types. So in order to answer those questions, uh, we perform a separate study by creating these hypothetical composites that are made of um, monodispersed zirconia inclusions inside of the matrix. And, and the first group has 1,000 micrometer uh, in diameter. And the second group uh, is 200 micrometer in diameter. And we create these simulations for three different volume fractions. And at each volume fraction, we create two realizations. And the same material properties of the matrix are um, given to, to these matrices, same as before, excuse me. And also uh, inclusions are zirconia. So we run the analysis similar to before. Um, we, we heat them up to 200 degrees centigrade, like I said, at, uh, like I showed you in the past, um, at about 200 degrees centigrade, most of these um, 
uh, yellowed elements will show up for these composites. And we can use the same uh, post-processing Python codes to extract information about the percentage of yellowed elements. So we should seek any effect of uh, inclusion size or volume fraction uh, if we want to investigate those questions that are all right, we started this research by um, creating these three different types of composites uh, experimentally. We tested more than 100 composite types in the lab, and um, we came up with these three compositions that we thought it's, um, more, they are more successful. And they are, they are actually being investigated. The possibility of um, patenting these materials is being investigated by our university. We measured uh, so many different material properties and documented uh, so many different uh, mechanisms of uh, thermal damage in these microstructures. And for the first time, we introduced this, um, the, you know, using the variation in R indices for design purposes of these materials. We then created these 2D finite element simulations, and um, we tried to run these simulations with the most accurate methodology that we could uh, develop based on the literature. And then we took that experience to create these uh, uh, really potent uh, codes for uh, creating 3D finite element simulations. We encountered multiple difficulties um, in running these simulations, some of which are still being researched by other groups. And then, so the results of this work have been presented in different conferences in the past and have been published in different journal papers and conference proceedings. I'm also planning to publish um, at least two more papers based on the results of this work in near future. This was a pretty large project with different aspects to it and I'm so happy to have had the chance of working on this project. I'd like to thank you all very much for being here with me. I know how kind each and every one of you have been to me in the past, and I truly feel blessed to be here with you today. Last but not least, I'd like to thank my advisor, Dr. Santana, and my committee members, Dr. Sullivan, Dr. Ural, and Dr. Wing. This has been a great experience to work with uh, these scientists and uh, I have learned so much from them, and without their support, this work definitely could not take place. But they have been more than scientific advisors and collaborators to me. They have been role models to me, and I have learned so much from these people. And uh, this has been truly the greatest honor of my life by far to work with these people. So if there is going to be an applause at the end of this presentation, I'd like to dedicate that to my advisor and my committee members. Thanks very much. <laughs>